the other time they were asking me, how, is that surely your son, your queen? When I went to the government and asked them, you're asking me about me, Akikuyu, and because my son has a different name, is a title, so he's not my son. You know, there was, okay, we are not going to talk to you, you bring a document. And I said, what are you asking? A document for Ma to, sh to prove that he's my son. What's your full name? My full name is Esther Wajiko Kamoko. Yes. And my son is Anthony Madime Wazome. My son is in Juba, in prison. Actually, I don't know where he, which prison he is in, because I've not been able to see him. I just heard he was jailed, and I heard he's been jailed for life. I've not spoken to him, I've not seen him, but I know he's jailed for life. He left here with his brother. First he left here with his, uh, with his friends, about ten of them. But uh, now most of them have come back. They went to work, yeah. They went to work and they were told, uh, okay, it's a good job. Yeah, it was a good job because here there is, he used to work here at River Road where he was getting 9,000 for a, a job that was being mis misused. So he s thought, okay, I've done this and this, I've gone to college, can't find a job here, and I've been told there's a good job. So he left. It was working out for him because then he used to feed us, he used to pay for his, uh, for my daughter's, part of my daughter's fees. It was good, and he used to feed himself. Yeah. Here he never used to be able to feed himself because the salary was too little. He was supporting us, yes. He's, in fact, when, when he's coming, he used to buy food for us for a year, one year. Yeah. Special soaps we could last for one year. Yeah, That is good support. When you consider here soap, you can't run back and uh, you cannot be able to afford. We have, yes, we have, as all of us, the families of all this, we have been together. I remember the first time we were told they have been taken in. We went, the fifth day we went to the Kenya government. And we have been in those offices, everywhere, everywhere in these offices, even to the parliament. There is no place we haven't been. They tell us uh, we are doing this, diplomatic. When we start talking to people, they tell us, don't go, you keep quiet, we are doing this. We, ca we go home and stay for four months, they don't do, any do anything. And now it's two years, going two years. Ev almost every day, uh, uh, especially only the times they, uh, like, when we start something, they tell us, don't, don't go anywhere, we are doing something. And we relax. We went to the president, we took a letter, we went to the office of the president, and now we're asking him, how long is it going to be for these people to come home? Especially now there is war, there is that country now, nobody knows about it. Yeah? And then the Kenyans are there, they are suffering. What are, what, are, what are they doing about these people? Because that is not now a place you can say you, you, are, you, are, you can just sleep and know that your child is in Jew, Sudan, South Sudan. No. To uh, the ambassador, Amina, we have tried to see her several times. We, are asked, we have asked her questions several times, and she has not even responded to us. We are asking her now for the last time because we don't know what is going on in South Sudan. Maybe it is our last time for the, our people, our children, to tell us, is she going to be able to bring these children up or we just go and, you know, forgive, forget these children? Because it's painful when you just cannot. <laughs> it's so painful. Two years. And you don't know where your child is. It's very painful for any mother to just go to bed eh, and know the son, your son, you don't know where your son is. Wake up in the morning, you don't know where your son is. 
it is very, very painful, and there's nothing you can do. Because it's a country that you, you can't travel even to go and see them. You can't say that I'm going by matatu or by bus. It is very, very painful.